morning, everyone. So today, um, I was asked to teach, and uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about how I believe I got up here to do this. And uh, <laughs> so I had a few verses in mind why uh, the following, the last, last month or so, um, actually right before camp also. Um, the first verse is um, Luke 9, and it's verse 59 through 62. It says, And he said to another, Follow me. But he, uh, but he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, also said, uh, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. The second uh, verses are Mark 10, 20 through 23. It says, um, and he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor. You will, And you will have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. Um, but he, he was sad at, his, at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And then Acts 22, 6 through 10. Now it happened as I journeyed and came near, near Damascus at about noon. Suddenly a great light from heaven shone around me, and I fell to the ground. And I heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So I answered, uh, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear the voice of him who spoke to me. So I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Arise and go to Damascus, and there you will be told all the things uh, which are appointed for you to do. So the first two, the first two uh, scriptures I read um, Jesus had to speak to them, like, to tell them, come and follow me. Give up this and come follow me. But the, the last one I, I like because Jesus doesn't even answer, and he's like, and Saul says, what shall I do, Lord? Like, right away. And, uh, and then God says, you know, go to, arise, go to Damascus, and then over there I will tell you what to do. So um, uh, I had to ask myself, because I was reading through this, and I had to ask myself, um, are my possessions getting in the way? Are my family getting in the way of what God wants me to do? Whatever, uh, is there anything in my life that is keeping me from um, following God to the fullest? And uh, this, again, this was all dur like last month, like right before camp and stuff, and uh, um, during camp. And, uh, you know, camp is just an awesome place. Uh, even for adults, you get time to spend with God and just uh, think about things. And, you know, I was thinking about, are all these things in my life, like, are they good for me? Like, um, the, the rich man that he talks about, um, he says, get rid of all your stuff, sell it off, and um, come follow me after that. And I looked at my stuff, and, um, you know, I, ha I don't have a ton of stuff, I don't think, but uh, I do have some... I have a lot of tools, I guess, and I don't I don't call those like stuff that's not necessary because I can use that stuff. I fixed the toilet the other day, so <laughs> it can't be that bad to have tools, right? But uh, I was looking at other stuff in my life, um, just like the entertainment stuff that I have, like uh, anything that I like, you know, whatever is good for me to enjoy, like guns and. Uh, movies and video games and comic books, like all these things that I have that I can enjoy and maybe it doesn't do me any good. And uh, I was looking at that stuff and um, seeing how, if it was like, you know, brought me closer to God. And really it doesn't, you know what I mean? Like none of that stuff really does. It's enjoyable, but it doesn't bring me closer to God. So 
I had to ask myself if I was willing to give that stuff up in order to follow him and just give it up. And um, again, the other one was, you know, to leave their family like behind. And um, that one's a really tough one, actually, because um, I spend a lot of time with my family. Like we spend <laughs> literally like every day with each other. We eat dinner with each other. And um, I spend a lot of time with my nephews. And when I have a bad day, like they just fill me with joy. It's awesome. So that one was a really hard one to, to like see say maybe I can't let go of that you know and not let God work in my life but uh at camp again I was I told God you know like if you want me to move somewhere or do something you know like whatever it is I will go if you want me to and it was a hard thing because you know I don't want to leave all, all that I got like my family and everyone here and stuff and so that was really tough for me to think about, but I, I had to give it to God. And On the way from um, back from camp, um, I was listening to this message, and it was about, it was about lift, the arms being lifted up of Moses and uh, how uh, Aaron and Hur lifted them up when uh, Moses was getting tired. And uh, I immediately con- thought of Isaac because he had this huge beard, and like... He looked like a Moses-type character. Like, I could picture him with the robe on, right, and lifting up a staff. And so, and like, you know, um, Moses had to sit down for the other two guys to lift up his arms, and I could see, like, it would be really hard to lift Isaac's arms up because he's a lot taller than all of us. So uh, I was thinking about Isaac and and the leaders here and just how, like, um, I could lift up their hands and be um, just... Encouraging, encouraging to them, and uh, I was reading this book at the same time, and it was called Holy Ambitions. And so, before the, I uh, listened to the study, I was think I was praying for God to like give me holy ambition, and sh- show me what I needed to do that He can do great things with. Like the whole book of Holy Ambition was God-sized dreams that only He can fulfill, and we get to be a part of seeing that happen. And uh, so my my idea changed when I heard that lesson. And uh, when I got back, I gave the book to Isaac, and I told him, like, I want to I want to hear your holy ambition, and I want to see what you want, and I want to follow that because you're my leader, and like um, help you to get those holy ambitions fulfilled. You know. So that was my whole thing. And so right after that. Um, a week later, I get called up here, or um, <laughs> Pastor Joe tells me to, that he'd like me to teach, and I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I, can't, I try to come up with ways at work to not do this. And uh, it's funny because during work, like at two different occasions, I actually had um, Bob one time and... Um, <clears throat> And Richard both come to work and encourage me to do it, and that's why I'm here today, even though I don't want to be. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's that's how I got up here. That's how I believe I got up here at this point, this time. So, um, so it's a great day because it's communion day, and like for me, that it's I mean it's kind of awesome because it cuts back a little bit of time that I have to talk. <laughs> because seriously, like, last, the last, um, last study was, uh, it's already like a week's worth of speaking for me or like words I could use in a week. So like, I'm already going two weeks now with this study of how many words I should be able to speak because I don't talk this much. Um, so this is a good, a good thing that I have communion, right? So, uh, um, the, the study today is going to be um, called Remember Me, and I have a slash there, and it says, we all, and I say, we all have CRSD, and if you've been around here much, you've heard Pastor Joe say, I have CRS, which is can't remember stuff. I had a D in there for disorder, so can't remember stuff disorder. And we all have that. That's what, what my study is about in remembering me. So I'm going to pray real quick just uh, about this study, and uh, we'll get started a little bit. And so, um, 
Lord God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone here, and God, uh, I just pray that you just bless this study and just uh, help me to speak your words, God, and help me not to be too nervous. And uh, God, I just know that you have it in control and that uh, you put me here. So thank you in Jesus' name, Amen. So again, this is a uh, this is me just like being up here, and I it it may be for someone, but. I kind of have been feeling like it's maybe just for me to just show my obedience and just like, okay, I'll do it even though I don't want to. So, um, it's just me being obedient, I guess. So, um, this first one, this first uh, scripture I'm going to read in, um, it's the most actually the most important one I think, and uh, it's uh, Luke 22:14 through 20. It says Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them with fervent desire um, to eat this pat. Oh, okay, hold on. I'm going to go back. Then he said to them with fervent desire, I have, desi I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took up the took the cup and gave thanks and said tell this and divide or take this and divide it among yourselves for I say to you I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes and he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me likewise he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you so this is the single most important to me, the single most important moment in history, because the Son of God um, is making a new covenant with humanity and saying, all you have to do is remember me in this moment and take this cup and, and uh, remember what, I've, what I'm about to do. And so he makes this new covenant with uh, everyone, uh, all, again, all humanity. And it bridges the gap between us and God. So um, remember this moment. Um, so in that, also in that scriptures, it talks about in those scriptures, it talks about Jesus, uh, Jesus's last meal, or he says like, my last meal before, uh, or until the, the marriage supper of the Lamb will be, or uh, until the, the kingdom of God comes. In verse sixteen. Um, it's like a long time to wait, right? I mean, to eat. I mean, I think about food all day long. <laughs> and uh, I can't wait till the next meal, you know? It's exciting. Um, but I can imagine what God uh, is feeling like when he's waiting for us to get there and that we could uh, eat that marriage shepherd of the lamb with him. He's just so excited. I can I can see you know that he's so excited to eat that meal with us. Um, so re again, remember that meal because it's going to be. I mean, he's he's looking forward to it. Um, so the forgetfulness of mankind. So like my whole study is basically on remembering, and um, so it's kind of more of a word study. But uh, the forgetfulness of mankind. The word forget, it means to fail to hold the mind. Um, it can be innocent or blameworthy, but most of the time in the Old Testament, it is used as blameworthy. And uh, it's the word shakach, I think, is how it's pronounced. I don't know. Maybe you can talk to Mike Gibson. He could probably tell you exactly what, how it's pronounced. Um, so Exodus 13.3. Um, and Moses said to the people, remember... This day in which you went out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by the strength of hand, the Lord brought you out of this place. And so um, we can also remember all the, the bondages we have been in and, uh, and remember how the Lord has brought us out of those things. And, uh, you know, that could be anything. We can be bond or bound to anything, you know. To money, houses, cars, sex, drugs, alcohol, excessive eating, lying, stealing, anger, envy, literally anything, right? We can be bound to anything. Um, 
So Jeremiah 3, 20 through 22, Surely as a wife treacherously departs from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, says the Lord. A voice was heard on the desolate heights, weeping and supplication of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their ways. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, you backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. I love that last verse, verse 22. It's God's heart, you know, for us just to return uh, his backsliding children. Like, that's his heart for us. Like, he sees us as his children, and all he wants is for us to come back to him. Um, Ezekiel 23, 35. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have forgotten me and cast me behind your backs, therefore you shall bear the penalty uh, of your lewdness and your harlotry. Judges 8, 33-35 So it was as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel again played the harlot with the Baals and made Baal beareth their God. Thus the children of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them. Um, Hosea 4, 6 through 10. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for, for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children, the more they increase, the more they sin against me. I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, they set their hearts on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests, so I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat, but not have enough. They shall commit harlotry but not increase because they have ceased obeying the Lord. In this section, it says they reject the knowledge, uh, forgotten the laws of God, and then they ceased obeying the Lord in the last verse. And these were guys who were supposed to be priests or the next people to be priests. And um, from, the, from my time in high school, I always believed like I could be a youth leader and um, it took a long time for me to get to that place, but uh, I got—I feel like I've been pretty comfortable with it lately, being in there, and uh, I never really thought about it until maybe this verse is just how um, comfortable I became, you know, in that, and um, how I could be just rejecting the knowledge that God has given me just because he, or or even just uh, not obeying him just because, um, because I was comfortable. And, uh, you know, that's why, again, why I'm up here, just to make sure that's not the case and I'm obedient to him. Because, yeah, I don't want to be in that place where I'm not being obedient to God. Um, Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 20, it says, Every... Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land in which, of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these forty years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. You should know in your heart that a man chastens his son, so the Lord God, your God chastens you. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. In verse 7 through 9, it describes that land, but we're going to skip to uh, verse 10. And it says, When you have eaten and are full, then you shall be shall bless the Lord your God for God, the good land which he has given you. It's this confidence that God has um, is you know, checking our hearts and uh, changing them. 
And uh, actually, during a, on a Sunday night a couple weeks ago, um, we were reading through this book, and uh, I don't know what it's called, I don't remember, but um, it said, ashes are what is left from a fire that has already done its work, and so there's nothing left to be burnt, to burn. God is doing, God is doing his work until there's nothing left in our lives to be burned out. In verse 11 it says, Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command you today, lest when you have eaten and are full and have uh, built beautiful houses and dwell in them, when you hurt your your herds and your flocks multiply, your silver, your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up and you you uh, forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents and scorpions and uh, thirsty, land, thirsty land where there was no water who brought water for you out of the flinty rock who fed you in the wilderness with manna which your fathers did not know that he might humble you and that he might test you to do uh, to do you good in the end. Then you say in your heart, My power and the might of my hand have gained me this wealth, and you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as, as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them, worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish, as the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so you shall perish, because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. So in this 20 verses, it actually says forget three times and remember two times. And uh, if you divide that up, it's pretty much like four, four times God's telling us not to, for, not to forget or to remember something. Uh, four in, each, in four verses, it tells us, every four verses, um, it's telling us not to forget or to remember something. And so, like, do you ever have someone in your life that is, like, repeats themselves all the time? And, like, at work... Um, my dad will repeat himself like three times. Sometimes I actually just ask him one more time just for fun. Just to say, what was that that you wanted me to do? I need to hear it one, the one more time. But uh, I do it, and God does it for us because we need that, obviously. Because he's saying it right here, like, you can't remember anything. So, so uh, yeah, he has to tell us multiple times 20 verses and he tells us five times um and it's funny because the last verse says because you would not be obedient to the voices of the lord your god so in the end after all that remembering that he told us to do we still forgot and we we're disobedient to the lord so um numbers 11 4 through 15 now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense cravings. So the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manna before our eyes. Skip ahead to verse 10. It says, Then Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, everyone at the door of his tent. The anger of the Lord was greatly aroused. Moses also was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you afflicted your servant? Why have, you not, why have I not found favor in your sight that you have laid the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I beget them? That you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a guardian carries a nursing child to the land which I swore to their fathers. Where I am, where I am, I get, 
Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they weep all over me, saying, Give us meat that we may eat. I am not able to bear all these people alone, because the burden is too heavy for me. If you treat me like this, please kill me here and now, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my wretchedness. We, or me, I get hangry sometimes in like, I think with my stomach, right? Like, I think about all the good food and stuff, and I complain about my life, even though I just really want to eat, you know? That's how, I mean, I don't know. It's not a place we should be, right? But, uh, you know, I think, you know, I left that last part in about Moses and how his feelings were at that time. And it's like, it makes me thankful for the leadership we have here that are just trying to get us through this wilderness. And they're like, you know, they they struggle themselves, you know. And um, again, they, they bring us, they're bringing us through this wilderness. They're praying for us, you know, teaching us to remember God and uh, instead of being this hangry guy that just wants to eat I want to be I mean I want to be a not a burden to to them and I want to again going back to what I was saying with uh, lifting up the arms of the leadership um, being a help to them knowing what their holy ambition is that God gives them like I want to be the person that can not be a burden but lift their arms up and uh, and strengthen them, encourage them, you know, like, we should all want that for our leadership, because they're supposed to be the ones guiding us, and, uh, so, um, too much of a good thing can become a bad thing, Deuteronomy 32, 12 through 15, so the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign god with him, he made him ride in the heights of the earth, that he might eat the produce of the field. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock, curds from the cattle and milk from the flock, with fat lambs um, and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats, with the choicest wheat, and you drank wine, the blood of grapes. But Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. You grew fat, you grew thick, you are obese. Then he forsook God who made him and scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. Hosea 13.3 or 13.6 When they had pasture, they were filled. They were filled and their heart was exalted. Therefore, they forgot me. Um, these two verses I put in there because um, as it is right now, we're one of the richest countries out there you know and so like we have a lot of wealth even though it doesn't seem like that sometimes like we have I'm sure most of us have fairly nice homes and stuff and clothes and everything we need but it's basically a warning not to forget God because we get comfortable in our lives that uh that we'd be you know those people that when Jesus says follow me that we can leave everything behind and follow him if he's called us to do that. So the application or the cure for CRSD says in Psalm 77, 1 through 15, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with my voice, and he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. How you hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. I called to remembrance my song in the night. I meditated within my heart and my spirit makes diligent search. I w uh, will the Lord cast off forever and will he be favorable no more has his mercy ceased forever has his promise failed forevermore has God forgotten to be gracious has he in anger shut up his tender mercies Selah and I said this is my anguish but I will remember the years uh, of the right hand of the most high I will 
Remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on all your works and talk of your deeds. Your way, O God, is the is in the sanctuary who is so great a God as our God. You are the God who does wonders. You have declared your strength among the peoples. You have with your arm redeemed your people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Selah. So you ever have those days when you're just fighting to fighting to think upon the goodness of God where you're just having these mental breakdowns basically it says in um, verse 2 my soul refuses to be comforted but in the end he comes back and he's he has to remember and meditate and then talk about all the deeds that God has done and uh, I mean that's just a thing we should want to do anyway we should remember, try to remember the things that God has done for us meditate on them and then actually share them with other people because at least for me like when people are sharing things that are going on in their lives the good things that God has done in their lives it's like this exciting feeling and it just changes our minds towards um, the bad that's coming into our minds also you know like it's just clean, cleansing that out you know and like making it into excitement you know about God um, so okay this one's this one's pretty funny I think at least it says numbers 15 37 through 41 again the Lord spoke to Moses saying speak to the children of Israel tell them to make tassels on their the corner corners of their garments through their generations to put a blue thread in these tassels of the corners and you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, that you may not follow the heart of the tree which, to which your own heart and your own eyes are inclined, that you remember and do all my commandments and be holy for your God. I am the Lord your God. So, excuse me. So this is funny to me just because it's like this this little tassel thing that we're supposed to sew on our garment just so we can remember what God has done in our lives. And uh, it's just funny to me to think that God would have to go to this extent to say, you guys can't remember, just stick something on your clothes just so you can remember, you know. And I was looking at pictures, in, of, or at least nowadays what they do, and they usually, uh, or what I've seen was they have this tassel connected to their belt loop and stuff, so... They have this. They have to put their pants on in the morning, and then they have to put their remembrance tassel on their their you know their belt loop so that they can remember. It's just crazy to think that God has to go to that extent just to keep us from keep us from not I mean forgetting him, you know. But um, let's see Deuteronomy 32 six through seven. Do you do you thus deal with the Lord? O foolish and unwise people, is he not your father who brought you out, who bought you, sorry? Has he not made you and established you? Remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you. This is like a good one to me because like for any young people, even including me, like we can ask we can ask our elders or the people around us what they have gone through and uh, we can escape or we don't have to go through that bondage or that that desert you know that they had to deal with if we just ask our elders because like the thing is there's no there's nothing like it says there's nothing new under the sun um, sin just puts on a different image like it just it's just put in a different wrapper right so the sin stays the same um, so yeah, we can look to our elders and escape that bondage, keep it away, you know. So and this one's my favorite one. I was reading it in Daniel, and uh, there was a commentary, and it's talking about Hanukkah uh, or the Feast of Lights, and uh, so that when they regained the temple, um, they only had enough oil, I guess, for one day 
for it to be lit and it took like eight days to um, make new oil so they pray to God for the uh, candle to be continue being lit for eight days and God uh, fulfilled that and so now there's a feast that God kept the candle lit for eight days and you wouldn't think that would be like this great thing but like we can do that same kind of thing in our lives with uh, with just doing things like when we see that God is working in something we can make a feast out of it it's, it's a great idea I mean who doesn't want to eat you know and have a feast <laughs> and we can thank God for whatever he's done like it's a perfect situation and really I mean if we're going back to like what I, the the first one I spoke of, which is you know the communion one, that where uh, God makes that um, new covenant with us, like God is all about eating feasts. So yeah, that one's a good one. The blessing for remembering Psalms 103, 17 through 18. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness, to the children's children, to such as keep his co his covenant, and the, to those who remember his commandments to do them. Psalms 25, 6-7. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they are from old. Do not, do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to your mercy, remember me, for your your goodness sake, O oh Lord. And, you know, this is a prayer to God, but, you know, it really is how God feels, and he's, like, going to forget our sins and not remember them. And um, I, I'm just so thankful for that, you know, that God does that for us. Um, Exodus 28 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And this one's just given, like, we ought to remember the Sabbath day and just, take a breath, think about what God has done in our lives and this week, you know, like how God has brought us through this week, last week, pray for God to get us through the, the next week, you know, like it's a time to reflect and see what God has done and is going to continue doing in your life and my life. Um, my final statement is Psalms 26 is now I know the Lord saves his anointed he will answer him for his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand um, some trust in chariots and some in horses but we will remember the name of the Lord our God and I was reading in a book um, this week it's the Lord's Supper as the sign and meal of the new covenant and it said excuse me Jesus does not invite all the multitude to his table. He invites his disciples to come. When, he, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are declaring to one another and the world that we are no longer part of the world, but by the grace of God, we, we have been brought out of the world and into the family of God. I said this is the most important moment in history uh, because we, we this moment make that uh, or we this moment take the place of his disciples in communion with God the Son as he hands you the bread and the wine and makes the covenant with you so um, this morning we're gonna I'm gonna ask the uh, music ministers and uh, the um, ushers to come up and uh, pass that out and Again, we did things a little differently, but I wanted you guys to have the time to um, take communion to yourself and like think about what God has done in your life. Remember the, what He's done, and uh, if you need forgiveness and you, if you need to repent, um, I just want to give you guys the time to do that. I always feel like there's not enough time to pray and sing anyway. Usually during uh, communion, like I want to do one or the other, and it doesn't work out. But uh, I just want to give you guys that time, and so just uh, uh, take communion on your own. And just feel what God is doing in your heart and speak to Him. And uh, again, thank you guys.